Hello, welcome to Physio Designer Tutorial Series. In this tutorial series, we are going to create a multi time scale adaptive threshold model, which is one of models of neuron membrane potential. On Physio Designer, abbreviating the model name, we call this as MAT model. Dividing into a couple of movies, we will create a MAT model piece by piece. In this movie, we are going to create a stimulus spike generator which outputs Poisson spike train. In this module, several a little bit tricky techniques are used, which are applicable to other modeling situations. All right, let's start with observing the MAT model. This model is composed of the stimulus spike generator, synaptic current generator, and MAT model. Calling Flint, run a simulation. Firstly this is the input Poisson spike train. The input spikes induce the postsynaptic current. Then the membrane potential is calculated based on the current. Simultaneously, the adaptive threshold is calculated. The points where the membrane potential touches to the threshold are considered as spike generations, which are outputs of the MAT model. In this movie, we will create the stimulus spike generator. In this tutorial, we consider stochastic spike train as the stimulus spikes, especially which follows Poisson process. It looks like the spike train shown in this slide. In the Poisson spike train, the interspike interval follows exponential distribution. Hence in the simulations, intervals following the exponential distribution are generated. An instance of the stochastic interspike intervals is shown in the right bottom panel. The algorithm to generate a Poisson spike train is quite simple. Assume that the first spike in the slide has just happened in the current time of a simulation. Then firstly, calculate the next timing to make a spike by adding an interspike interval to the current time. The interspike interval is randomly generated based on the exponential distribution. When the time in the simulation comes to the next timing, a spike is created, and the same process is repeated. We will give a brief explanation for the mathematical basis of the relationship between Poisson and exponential distribution. Poisson distribution is given by the formula at the top in the slide. Here, lambda is the mean and variance of x. This means that, lambda spikes occurs within a unit of time. If we consider the t times larger time window, instead of the unit time, there must be lambda t spikes in the time window. Now we consider this time window as a new unit of time. The Poisson distribution can be written as the right upper equation. The probability of no occurrences of spikes in t unit of time is given by the second equation. This can be interpreted in another way. Actually, it is the probability that the time to the first occurrence of a spike, which is labeled by capital T, is greater than T. Conversely, the probability that a spike does occur during T unit time is given by the fourth equation. Notice that, this is the cumulative exponential distribution. Hence by differentiating it by T, the probability density function of the exponential distribution is obtained as written in the bottom. Okay, then let's start to create the model. Here we create only one module, and implement several physical quantities in it. Open a physical quantity dialog. The first physical quantity is interval. Its type is variable parameter. As explained previously, the value must be determined randomly with the exponential distribution. Hence here we use a special function to generate a random value, exponential variate. The argument to the function is the value of the parameter lambda. Next, let's create a next timing physical quantity. This time, the type should be state. Its initial value is the interval, which corresponds to the timing of the first spike occurrence. We expect that the next timing physical quantity is incremented by the amount of the interval at every spike occurrence, and in between two adjoining spikes, the next timing should remain at the same value without varying. Hence, the basic implementation is that, its derivative is equal to zero, so that it can stay constant. 
and in the extra implementation, we define the increment of the spike occurrences, as a kind of the special case of the definition, select conditional, at the definition type, and select if, in the combo box, the condition should be spike equal equal 1. Notice that, to describe the condition, there must be two equals, as like other computer programming languages. The physical quantity, spike, is not defined yet, but which represents that there is a spike if it is 1, and no spike if it is 0. So if the spike is equal to 1, the next timing is reset to the last spike occurrence time plus the next inter-spike interval. Here spike and last are not defined yet, so Physio Designer asks you if you want to create entries for them automatically, by popping up a dialog. Next is the spike. This type is variable parameter, we need to define it using conditional phrases. If the time in a simulation reaches to the next timing of a spike occurrence, then the value of the spike becomes 1, otherwise 0. Here, please notice that the time is a specially reserved physical quantity, representing time in a simulation. At last, we define a physical quantity named, last, actually this represents the timing of the last spike occurrence. Similarly to the next timing physical quantity, its value is incremented at each spike occurrence, and in between two adjoining spikes, it must remain constant, again its type is state, and basic implementation is that the derivative is zero. And at the extra implementation, we set a conditional definition, if the spike is equal to one, the last spike timing is reset to the next spike timing. Finally, change the order to, after, this configures the evaluation timing of the definition in the simulation process. The detail of the meaning of before and after is explained at the end of this tutorial. That's all for definitions of the physical quantities. Click OK button to close the dialog. Let's create an outport, so that the module can output a Poisson spike train. Select Edit Ports in the context menu. In the dialog, set a name in the outport table, and select the spike physical quantity in the combo box. Finally, let's save the model, and run a simulation to check the result by calling Flint. At first, observe the interval, it seems to correctly distribute following the exponential distribution. Next is the spike, does it seem Poisson process? Yes, it seems okay. Then, how about the next timing? It looks like a regular steps, the heights of steps correspond to the inter-spike intervals. Now, Let's try to run a simulation one more time. Comparing the spike, you see, each simulation generates different Poisson spike train. At the end, we explain about the order of the extra implementation. The numerical integration is the main part of a simulation process. But just before and after the numerical integration, there are pre-process and post-process of the physical quantities. The evaluation of the extra implementations are done in either pre-process or post-process. To evaluate it in the pre-process, before, must be selected for the order. Similarly, to do it in the post-process, after, must be selected. All right. That's all for this tutorial. Thank you for watching. Hope to see you in the next tutorial. Goodbye.